Hey everybody, this is Stacy with SF Johnson Consulting and Construction Services. And in this video, I'm going to go over quickly kind of like the thought concept behind how you as a plumbing construction manager or a plumbing professional can think about building a construction schedule based on your estimate. So if you have a detailed estimate like, like the ones we produce, it's pretty easy because construction schedule just means that you are trying to outline your amount of time it's going to take you to do the job and some jobs you can do together some have to be done first before others but I, in this little video I want to just focus and if you're interested in something like this or taking a class like this make sure you subscribe hit the bell notification and also give me a like because my job is to make my clients professionals not just a bunch of sloppy contractors out there so let's talk about if you're the plumber this is how you're to think about your trade in terms of time you have your rough ends right which is uh, typically the things that are going to go underground you know and then you have your finish plumbing your finished stuff once everything's in basically that's what you finish it with i don't know how to say it any better than that so when we're talking about plumbing you have to think that your rough in portion is all of your uh vent waste all your underground pipe everything that goes underground until it pops up from <laughs> the foundation okay and so when you're looking at your estimates you're going to think in terms of things like your grease waste your possibly your gas but your vent pipes definitely the ones underground okay anything that is from the civil set coming in right for certain that is your rough in and so if you do a detailed estimate you're going to know how many man hours for each operation and so you just take the finish minutes or the rough in minutes subtract those from the what would be the finish which is all of the even the rough ins for let me let me go back to rough ins even the rough ins for the sinks because that's a separate cost that you have to make sure that you have so even those rough in uh, activities that's part of your rough end now once you get to connect in the toilets and connect in the sinks and the faucets and all of that stuff that's finish okay so in terms of the equipment now any of the clean outs that's rough end stuff the clean outs are rough ends uh now when it comes to the actual equipment it, it really depends on which equipment we're talking about Okay, so in terms of like floor sinks or whatever, you could consider that a finish. Just the way a sink is a finish in the bathroom, a floor sink, but the piping that brings it up, that's the rough end. Okay, and so you'll be able to just take out these numbers as they apply and come up with your schedule for your rough end time and then your schedule for your finish time. And then part of your finish would be also to test the system. You know, part of your rough end would be anything you need to check prior to even beginning the work. That's part of your rough end time and cost. Okay, and so that's how you go about doing that. So it's pretty, I mean, the, the, the key to it is always to have a very detailed estimate. P bit by bit, line item by line item so it serves you in a lot of ways this way you know you're not cheating yourself in terms of hours that the job will take because all these numbers we get from our cost book that if you're a student you know you get that for life for free okay but that comes from the cost book which is the industry standard for how long the construction industry says it takes to do something so that's good enough to make sure you're not cheating yourself and you're not overcharging okay so construction managers can use this owners right if you're an owner and you're out there and we hear a lot about and i keep saying it in every video the great resignation where now we have these plumbers that are starting their own businesses with people their their buddies whatever 
Well, you have to be able to determine how long a job is going to take so you'll know how many jobs you can do in a month or how many jobs you should be looking for if you have a crew. And we'll go over that too because I had a issue with the client because he's like, oh my, you have my man hours wrong. It's supposed to be 200 and some da da da. I'm like, that's your crew. That's your crew. Your crew is, depending on the size of your crew, keep this in mind too. Depending on the size of your crew, three, four, five, two. It's three, four, five, two. <laughs> that one number right there. Okay. So if you have a crew of three, then it's going to be $150, $151 for your crew rate. And it's usually better than what you just coming up out of your head. Because again, all of this is based on industry standards. Okay, so I had to clarify that. Because a crew of three is going to give you 24 hours of work in a day. Crew of four right typically eight hour days that's how you do that so again that's how you know how to determine how long your job is going to take that way you'll know how many jobs you need to get in a month based on how many people you have it's like okay i have a crew of five how long is this job going to take okay so that's all part of being a project manager a manager a good owner and a very technically uh, advanced contractor so if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section if you like it let me know please subscribe and uh, let me know what trade you're in I'll make sure I get you what you need all right so we're going to end it here with wish you'd never left oh don't worry I'll be back Uh, see you next time.